Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Good afternoon from Moscone Center in San Francisco. This is theCUBE. theCUBE goes live to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. This is our fifth year doing VMworld. So we're here at VMworld 2014 in San Francisco. Peter Cutts is here, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We're going to talk cloud. Peter is the general manager of the cloud business unit at EMC. Peter, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So tell us about the cloud business unit. Um, relatively new. Um, Tell us about the organization. Yeah, sure, so um, think about it as a, almost about a 12 to 16 month journey of kind of looking at the way our customers and partners consume our technology along with federation technology, along with industry technology. And what we realized is we were really forcing our customers into being integration engineering shops when they really should be focused on what I would call you know, IT services and IT as a service and any type of like X as a service on top of that, desktops, et cetera. And so we formed a business unit that operates much like a product business unit within EMC that has all the cross-functional representation and goes through our normal go-to-market business uh, readiness processes. And so when you look at what the cloud business unit really is all about, it's about taking our products, uh, linking them together with best of breed products from, as an example, with the EMC Hybrid Cloud today, the VMware best of breed technologies, engineering those together into a pre-engineered solution so that when a customer goes to actually kind of consume from EMC, you know, a, a cloud, they effectively get all the services, educational services, they get the integrated solution delivered in a very short period of time. We did build a cloud live at EMC World as we got that done under about 17 hours from you know, start to finish and really proved that under a week, a customer can have infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and applications as services. The kind of differentiation that EMC really uh, brings together is adding in things like backup and recovery as a service, so that that's tied in. DR as a service, high availability. These are all just check boxes that people can consume and actually apply and manage it themselves while also focusing on how IT manages and making it easier for them. So cloud architect, cloud admin, approaching it a little bit differently. So, so your business view. unit sells essentially the solution, is that correct? correct? Yep. So do you have engineering in, in We do, your, we have your, an engineering staff and we've, uh, we're growing that substantially to really focus on you know, the different uh, part components in the market and the components of the solution because it's very broad as you can imagine. It's not just the EMC technology, it's really integrating from the m and layer all the way down through the EMC technologies that go through. So how do you, do, so you own strategy too, is that right? We or do, so yes. you have your, your own strategic destiny. We do, for the solutions, um, yes. For the solutions that are, that's a big TAM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good opportunity, yes, so. Okay, and so, and I suppose somehow it matrix, matrix, matrixes up to the other parts of, of EMC and absolutely. somehow absolutely. somebody smart makes the math work. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. Okay, well so, you know, talk a little bit more about that because EMC think, is thought of as a hardware company sure. as we were talking about off camera. Um, and you're now talking about solutions that are very heavily software led. We live in this software defined world. Everybody's going software defined crazy. And sure. That's a good thing. Um, so, Talk about that transformation and what it means for your organization. Well, I think it, it means a lot. When you think about um, software defined, it's, also, it's all about automation and providing an outcome, right? The, the goal is to automate the infrastructure underneath and provide IT the ability to give the services that I mentioned, such as infrastructure, platform, applications, all as services, allow people to control their destiny, get a self-service experience. There are certain components that will basically, when you think about Viper, it's software-defined storage for us. It can configure anything, whether it's software or hardware-defined underneath it. You think of our backup technologies that can be software or hardware uh, as appliances. We tie all that together in a neat package for an experience for the customer. So there is some customers who want best-of-breed hardware, and there are some customers who want commodity, and we kind of blend that together and allow those kind of things to fall out, out of selection, but the key is to give them an engineered solution that gives them an experience that they can take to their own customers and reproduce. And our partners, by the way, as well, I don't want to leave them out, they get access to all of these engineered solutions and all of the uh, content and IP along with it. So, okay, so let me play sort of, let's role play. Sure. I'm a potential customer and I, I come to say, Peter, I like EMC, we've had a long standing relationship, you're one of my strategic suppliers, love you guys, reliable, always do what you say you're going to do and you know, we've been together for 15 years, 
awesome. But I get pressure from the corner office. The CEO says that most of my IT spend is non-differentiated and he's saying for now on, I got to consume everything essentially as a service. So it's a consumption-based model. No more upfront cost. I don't want to provision any hardware anymore. I don't want to do any end use, uh, 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 enterprise license agreements and no penalties for early exit. Can you help me? So I think it, when you look at it from a standpoint of financial vehicles aside of leasing and other yeah, ways sure. of kind of transacting, right? The real thing when you back that up is that the, they're not under pressure to go do specifically that, they're under pressure to reduce costs, create operational efficiency, drive agility, at least the experiences that I've had with mm -hmm. customers. A lot of them are focused on cost, but less so and more looking at how can I drive agility. So I don't want to minimize the cost and the, and the consumption model, but I also want to say that IT has an opportunity right now to take, to be able to present a, a fully functional infrastructure platform, all these things that they can provide as services to their customers. And I think when you show them that they can do that on-prem with a very reliable infrastructure that can deliver a better experience with great SLAs, with great uh, self-service functions that, by the way, also takes away their end users and developers from having to be IT people because other vehicles sometimes make the individual developer or the application owner, they have to go configure the environment, comply to the security requirements, et cetera. With EMC Hybrid Cloud, that's all done. So I think it more goes back to, to answer your question, what is the customer trying to achieve? If it's truly a, a, a licensing or a consumption model that they're trying to break, um, I think you'd step back and look at some examples uh, where customers have made those decisions. When you, when you think about um, University of Phoenix as that example, they went that way and then realized that they could deliver it better, faster, and with the reliability on-prem. So I think conversations that I've had with customers help us drive them to a blend, by the way. There's always going to be a need for a public consumption, and so it just depends on what goes where. And we yeah, help and them by the way, that. I'm not necessarily suggesting uh, a public consumption model. I, I should have should have clarified that. Um, maybe it's a hybrid consumption model. Absolutely. But one where they want to change the, the, the nature of the transaction. Now, you're, uh, if, I, um, if I infer correctly, you're saying you could accommodate that through financial sure. means. You could simulate that through yes. financial means. Right. Okay, got it. Yeah, so Peter, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if you could speak to kind of that hybrid discussion because you know, here at the show we tend to get very myopic that you know, hybrid means you know, the vCloud offering here. Mm -hmm. But you know, my understanding is your, your solutions span much more uh, than just VMware. I believe I saw an announcement with Microsoft Azure not that long ago. You know, what, 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 what are the hybrid pieces uh, that make up the, the solution set that you offer? So today, the EMC Hybrid Cloud is focused around VMware, um, really looking at how we can bridge out to our CSPs as well. So we have some service, part uh, service provider partners that we also bridge to that allow us to uh, you know, provide that provisioning experience with choice. So um, vCloud Air obviously is, is the lead and, and one of them, but we also have CSPs who are really, really aligned to the direction we're going. Um, Azure is an example, powered by EMC underneath in certain areas. Those are the things that we're doing. Um, so again, it's, it's kind of that uh, discussion across the board, which is choice, and really making sure that we integrate across the board and have uh, offerings in, in each stack. Okay, so uh, you know, talk about choice. The other th word that often comes up is open. And uh, the keynote this morning, I actually I heard a little bit more open source than I, than I would have expected. Yes. There's open compute, there's open stack, there's Docker discussion. Um, and you know, when, when I think about EMC and VMware in general, they're not you know, super you know, involved in a lot of the open source stuff. So you know, when, when you look at the cloud strategy, how, how does things like open source and open stack fit into that? Well, I think it plays into um, the needs of customers, right, if you back it up, and, and to where you're saying there is a need where customers want an alternative, um, whether it's uh, you know, VCAC manipulating, whether it's Hyper-V or KVM underneath or ESX underneath as an open source model, as Pat mentioned today. And then there's the other pieces which maybe they're trying to do something completely different with a different partner. Um, you know, again, it's back to the federation of we really have an opinion but also offer choice, and I think what you'll see over time is that we'll focus a lot more on providing that choice and getting deeper into uh, those communities. So I wonder if you can uh, unpack for us a little bit, you know, the, the buyers of these technologies, because of course, you know, EMC went well beyond just selling to the storage guys long ago, moved, moved up to, you know, more of the C levels, have the business kind, you've got the line of business, you've got cloud architects, you've got developer people that maybe more of the Federation and Pivotal would get into. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you, eh, how do you sort that out and, uh, you know, make your plan of attack for, uh, you know, how cloud gets sold to the end users? 
Well, I think at the highest level, I think when, you, when you're looking at what CIOs and VP of infrastructures, VPs of storage, et cetera, they're all under the pressure that was mentioned, right? So they've got to deliver a service to their customers, they've got to deliver it in, you know, in a certain way very quickly and prove time to value and agility for IT, that's it. So I think when we first started this journey, it was a little more contentious where it was like, well, wait a minute, this whole cloud thing's not going to happen or it's still pretty slow. I believe this year, if I had to look at it, uh, and especially next year, I believe adoption will be the key here as opposed to worry, you know, worrying about the different pieces and uh, parts. And so I guess my view to answer your question is that you know, unpacking that story is customers all need to provide infrastructure as a service. It's just a, it's something that I think they're starting to realize and power to the end user. And one of the things that we do with some of our materials is we actually create that so customers can go use that and sell to their line of businesses themselves. Because our IT partners that we've been with for years, they need to actually be able to show that they can deliver that service in a very fluid way, in a very solid way, so that they can actually make them feel like they're getting the experience they want. And then you layer on things like next-gen application development, and you know, Pivotal obviously ties in there with Cloud Foundry, you tie in the data lake and how they're going to run those apps against a huge repository of information. It really is a pretty good story that comes together very easily uh, for CIOs, VP of infrastructure, VP of apps, and, and it really, I, I see it as a unifier actually, and that's what we've seen with the discussions we've had to date with our, our customers. So you mentioned, Peter, you're talking about, um, so you mentioned you know, backup as a service, DR as a service, HA, et cetera, but you sort of broadly talked about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and something you called application as a service. I, I, th I think of an app store. Um, is that what you're talking about, helping customers get there? Uh, and, and it doesn't sound like an out-of-the-box solution. Are there so other services components involved in your solution? So you talk about well, that. Well, so the basic, it's a great question. So the basic infrastructure as a service and platform as a service are, are basic, going to be coming right out of the factory uh, from our VCE partners. And so, you know, VSpecs, et cetera, these will be pre-engineered solutions that you can take out the door. Um, when I think of DR, backup, and storage uh, performance tiering, those things, all HA, all as services, they're really all part of a single provisioning operation, which is what we've done to customize kind of the provisioning experience. Right. So they're not really separate services. They're like, hey, I'm going to order an application. Maybe it's uh, Oracle, maybe it's a new net new group of VMs for a web app. And I basically order that template, and by the way, I need a backup policy with it. And I want to be able to manage that backup policy. I get to choose it. I get to choose the storage tier of each layer of that application. If IT wants them to, by the way, if it's production and finance, maybe you take away all choice. But that's the power of the integration and the engineering is that you can allow IT the flexibility to control when that's necessary to compliance and other things, but allow flexibility for developers and users and line of businesses. So it really provides kind of this, it's, it's really an integrated thing. It's not DR separately as a service, it's like, hey, I'm ordering a VM that requires DR capabilities. I check a box, I put it in an RPO, and I'm going. Okay, so and that's it's that a, easy. That's a service that I can invoke as part of the package. That's correct. Okay, so my, my other question, uh, we were talking, um, you, in, you, you, I didn't ask the question while you inferred I was talking about a a Amazon before, uh, but I want to bring that in now. So uh, you talk about outcomes. Uh, obviously, there's pressure from public cloud, but generically calls it public cloud. I like prefer to talk about Amazon because they're the gorilla. Um, are, are your customers saying, I want to be Amazon-like, closer to Amazon. I know I can't be Amazon, but I want to cut my cost. Where are they on that sort of spectrum and maturity model? Well, I think they're looking for help to understand where they are sometimes. So when you think, you just had Mike obviously on. Yeah. It's a lot of um, services conversations for some people. Right. And then there are others who just come in and say, I need to deliver, and they understand what their, what their end users line of business as developers are asking for, which is they want the basic services. They want infrastructure platform as a service, and they want their application template, their, their build, their hardened build in a catalog with the capability to provide backup, uh, backup tiering, uh, DR, high availability, those things as an object and basically deliver those. So what I'd say is we were more prescriptive with those customers and say, hey, if you know that you need to deliver, this is where you want to go and this is what you need to do. And so a lot of them are saying, I want to be, I want to provide a public cloud experience on-prem, but I want to be able to offer more value. So, so. It's, it's the consumerization of IT trend that That's you're right. enabling on-premise. On now, and I should say, I shouldn't say just on-premise, right? Because again, the provisioning you know, to uh, vCloud Air, the provisioning out to our CSPs, 
that is part of our solution as well. So you can literally consume VCHS, sorry, vCloud Air, I'm going to take a long time right. yeah, on yeah, that one. It's going to take a while, I know. Um, but uh, you, know, you can actually okay. consume that as part of your operations. So I should have said, uh, under their control. Yes. I mean, that really, that's, I mean, it goes, goes back to the original notion and premise of uh, what was then called private cloud. Remember, private cloud was originally sort of a hybrid, yeah. as defined. I think one of the first guys I saw was Chuck Hollis sort of wrote this blog about that, but, <laughs> but, but it, the whole notion was control. So you're, uh, you're right, I, I stand corrected there. So or brokerage, right? So part of the EMC hybrid cloud solution does include AWS provisioning because it's the base in, in the vCloud uh, suite. So it's an arrow I, in the quiver. That's correct. Okay, a and where are you seeing, uh, so uh, what are the outcomes? I mean, how, from, a, from a cost and efficiency and agility standpoint, I don't know how, how people are measuring it, but I'd love to hear sort of the results. I mean, we're several years in now to the cloud trend. You're only, that's what you say, 16 months into this sort of business unit, but you guys have been on the cloud early. You know, the journey to the private cloud starts now, I think was 2010. <laughs> so, um, so what are some of the outcomes that you're seeing and can you share with us any metrics? Yeah, I think that if I look at the, um, the information that was given at the partner uh, event last night from the Apollo Group, uh, University of Phoenix, and again, this is spot experience, so we'll, we'll, we'll you know, give a couple of examples to make sure we, we resonate here, but if you think Great. about the efficiency, um, the reliability, the over-provisioning that they had to do before um, you know, when they were on a public cloud infrastructure, and they brought it in-house to reliable uh, V-blocks on, on hardened hardware with the, so with the kind of software experience, with cloud and infrastructure as a service, they can now spin up their virtual machines and you know, 15 minutes, which used to take them pretty much a window overnight that was you know, kind of breaking their model for business of when students could access things. That's with their former public cloud, you're saying? Correct, now okay. they're in, and they can actually do you know, this whole build for 150 VMs in 15 minutes, which now, again, provides them with that value. So that was an interesting story uh, right there of how it was cheaper, better, and this was per her, uh, for her account, cheaper, better, faster, and more reliable on-prem from, from her experience. Uh, another example of that would be like Columbia Sports, not that they've ever used, uh, excuse me, Columbia Sportswear. They've never used public cloud that I know of, but from an internal private cloud, uh, and I actually believe they're going to start consuming vCloud Air. Another example of where they were able to create this offering and drive cloud usage and, you know, yeah, drive Yeah, big returns. SAP shop, we've had them on theCUBE before as well. Yeah. All right, Peter, we have to leave it there. We're getting the hook sign. So uh, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, sharing some uh, customer experiences, and uh, good luck. All right, thank you. Thanks right, for having keep, me. Keep it right there, everybody. We will be back after this message. This is theCUBE. We're live from Moscone in San Francisco. Be right back.